We don't see anything infinite around us, do we? Uh, anything we can, any objective experience that we have. In, in other words, something that you can demonstrate to somebody else uh, is, is finite. Uh, number of minutes in a year or in a lifetime is finite. Uh, number of grains of sand, you know, you're on the beach and you, you look, you just grab, you know, a handful of sand and you see it's, it's an enormous number, but now think of uh, all grains of sand on this beach. Think of all grains of sand on the entire planet Earth. Still a finite number. It's not infinite. So where do we find infinity? That is a question. So, but in mathematics, we have a trick. We can introduce infinity as an axiom, you see. We can just postulate its existence and see how far it can take us. What is infinity? Well, um, many you know, philosophers, scientists, mathematicians have debated uh, this question for centuries. And um, here it's important to distinguish between two types of infinity. One is called potential infinity and the other is called actual infinity. This was already uh, known to Aristotle, in the, in the great uh, Greek philosopher, in the 4th uh, century BC. Potential infinity is the idea that for every number, there is a bigger number, there is a larger number. You can always add one. So you, you think a billion is a big number, but you can add one to it. A billion, billion and one is still a bigger number. A billion and two is still a bigger number. A billion and three is still a bigger number, and so on. Right? It, the process never ends. So, but at each moment, we only behold finitely many numbers. You see? That's potential infinity. So there's a potentiality of going further and further. The process never stops, but we never reach the end. Whereas the idea of actual infinity is that you can take all natural numbers at once, that a collection of all natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five, etc., exists as a thing in, a, in a, of itself, you see. And so, and that is controversial because uh, there is nothing in mathematics that proves or disproves the existence of this collection, which mathematicians call a set. And um, the, in, the, in the work of a great German mathematician, Georg Cantor, um, the this, this set uh, received the, the first rigorous and systematic treatment. And Cantor was the first one to figure out that actually, if we do accept the actual infinity of natural numbers, that we will be able to construct also other infinite sets which are still larger and larger and larger. So not only there is an actual infinity, but there are infinity of infinities as well. Infinities of infinities. <laughs> there are some mathematicians, they call themselves finitists, who refuse to accept this axiom. And they only accept finite sets. Interestingly enough, a lot of results in mathematics can still be proved without accepting infinity. But mathematics becomes limited and impoverished. So for mathematicians, accepting infinity is not a question of dogma or ideology or religion. It is really a, 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 a pragmatic approach. It's just a pragmatic approach. If you do accept the axiom of infinity, your theory becomes richer. It becomes more diverse. It becomes much more fun. And that's why we do it. <laughs>